You guys know that we just installed our new wall oven. First time ever having a wall oven and we're loving it. It's been nice just having an oven again. We tried to pick a really good model. This is an LG Studio. It's sort of a high-end model and it comes with a lot of great features. All kinds of uh, heat settings, bake settings, roast settings. Comes with even a probe that can plug right into the side of the oven here. Built-in probe to read the temperature of the meat or whatever you're cooking. Um, it's got these ball bearing rollout tray. All kinds of cool features loaded. But there was one feature that our oven was missing and that is a push-pull stick. Sometimes you gotta pull the tray out of the oven to get whatever you got in there out or in. And obviously you can't grab this when it's hot. You can use a uh, pot mitt you know, or a rag. That's what I usually do. I usually grab a rag and I, I use that to slide it in and out. As you can see, the rag kind of flops all over. Not exactly safe. And I decided I needed one of these. And what this does is it has a little hook right here, a little notch on the end. And you can pull your tray out and you can push your tray back in without touching it, really safe. Keep your hands away from the hot metal. And I was able to get this at greenacrehomestead.com and uh, it is made, handmade, by a friend of ours, Sam, at greenacrehomestead.com. Now, I decided to buy this because two things. I wanted to be safe, and this is really cool to be able to do this, do that, pull it out, you gotta baste your, your chicken, whatever you're doing, and you can push it right back in without touching the hot rack. It's just a little extra safety feature, plus it helps a local small business, and we really like supporting small business, so, it's a win-win for everybody. This is made so well, very smooth, very cool, very neat. I'm happy with how the quality. You don't see these in many kitchens, but it's actually a really great conversation piece and a handy tool to have. You never know when you're gonna have to push or pull that tray in or out of your oven. It works on those uh, standard trays as well. You can use it to uh, move your dishes around in there if you have to, but just a neat little tool. You know, now that we have a wall oven, I decided it's finally time to get the push-pull stick of my own. We'll just keep that on the fridge right by the oven here in case we need it. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. We're gonna have a link below to the uh, website where we got it. We make no money off it. We're just showing you because it's cool and it's something that we bought and wanted to share.
Well guys, you can see I'm getting some more drywall work done. And believe it or not, we're in the living room again. We're bouncing back and forth, kitchen, living room. Just trying to get jobs done. This space might seem a little unfamiliar, but if I back up, you can see where I am. Front door, this is the entryway. And this is where we had all of our cabinets piled up. You know, the old kitchen. We finally got those out of the house, put them out in the barn, and I'm able to get in here and start doing some drywall. You can see a hole in the wall down here. I actually opened that up. Um, that was a miscut that I closed up previously. I opened it back up just to do a little bit of work and I was changing some ideas I had, so maybe more on that later. But it feels good to be able to get in here and start working on this drywall. Most of the living room is almost done now. I've been working on it a little bit here and there over the last uh, week or so. Just getting the ceiling seams, all these wall seams covered. They're mostly smooth. I think we're on the last coats. This will need a few coats because I just started this area. It's been kind of clogged up with junk. pretty level. It's not quite touching right here. It's a little bit high, but I still got to bind these two cabinet uh, fronts together, but I'm just trying to make sure it's level before I do. This cabinet's sitting up just a hair higher than this one, but overall it does appear to be pretty much level. This one might just be a little low on the end. I'm not sure if I should try to bring that down or not. I do have shims underneath it, so I can drop it down a little. Whether or not that helps me though, not sure. So I dropped it down, now it's really level, and my bubble is still good. So I'm happy with that, we'll leave that level. Now I'm going to just tighten these up together with a screw right through here. Now, I just gotta make this door swing the right way. I don't wanna swing in this way. Because that peels a little bit backwards. So we take the door off, flip it around. Looks like we got a little rub mark there we'll have to repair. But, I'm gonna turn it around and put it right on this side. That looks good. So now the door swings the right way. Um, luckily this kitchen set does come with a touch-up kit. So there's just a little dig in the paint caused by the hinge when it was on this side. And we can just easily touch that up. We'll patch these little holes on the side too. Maybe I'll actually use one of those holes right now to join these cabinets together.
Last but not least, I actually have to hook it to the wall. It's only hooked to each other right now, and we want it to be secure. It's not going anywhere, but let's screw it to the wall, and we'll be done. All right, I uh, got my screw way back there. You can see my uh, stud mark. So, screw it in, nice and tight, nice and level. Looking good. The cabinets are finally complete. This looks so good. And you can see it's very symmetrical, 12, 36, 24, 18, 24, 36, 12. So that's the center cabinet. I designed it that way intentionally because I think it looks a little more interesting and cool and maybe more professional when things line up nicely. Some people criticized us about these uppers not being symmetrical with the bottom. They don't have to be. There's no rule. There's no guidelines. There's not even, it's not even normal. So you can line them up, but it doesn't have to. For example, I have a 36 inch base here for my stovetop. The stovetop is only 30 inches. So I wanted a 36, so I had room to work and put it in there without cutting these away. But since it's a 30 inch top, I'm gonna have a 30 inch hood. This is gonna be 30, no matter what. This is gonna be 36, no matter what. So of course it's not gonna be symmetrical. Instead, I got a 12 and a 15. There's the three inches. And then this one comes over three inches. There's a lot of people who always tell us how to do things, how we're doing it wrong, but there is no wrong. We actually do know what we're doing. This is what we're good at. And this is gonna work awesomely. So don't let people tell you, you can't line, you, you have to line up your uppers to your lowers. It's, it's silly. Um, honestly, the kitchen looks awesome. It's coming out even better than I imagined in my mind. Uh, we sketched it out on paper, but when you see it in real life, it's pretty cool. Now that we got this cabinet in, this is the one we were waiting for, and they got it to us. Uh, you can see I added my filler strip to it. I didn't show you guys that, but I put that on. Now that that's done, we can actually start working on countertops. So that will be coming soon, I hope. We'd like to get this project rolling. So I'm probably going to keep working on the living room, do a little more drywall work, keep the house going, get done what I can get done. And we'll be back soon with another video. Uh, yeah. So, as always, we appreciate you watching, and until next time, take care. It's April 2nd. We finally got our seeds started. I think our last frost date is around the 1st of June. So we're two months before our last frost date. And this year we're gonna try to do a garden.